Hi everyone, welcome back to Winging It. We're in week 43 and this week we're going to actually prepare two blocks for our quilt. One's going to be really straightforward and the other one is going to involve a little bit more embroidery. If you're new here, we've been making a quilt on a garden theme all the way through 2023 and we make roughly one block a week and I'll put a playlist at the top of the screen so that you can go and watch any of the other videos that you might have missed. Most of our blocks work as standalone pieces so there are loads of ideas in this playlist to inspire you to stitch. So the first block we're going to make today, we're just going to prepare for quilting. So I've got a piece of my Bugs and Flowers fabric and you'll also need a pencil and a grid ruler. This is a quilting ruler with 5mm grid lines on it. And I want to rotate my fabric so that the top of the pattern is facing to the left. Now this is a piece that I've cut to 20 centimeters square and that's the size of all our blocks and we're going to mark on some lines that we'll then stitch over once our quilt is put together. So I want to start by lining up the four centimetre marker on my ruler with the edge of my fabric square and I want to make sure this one is quite precise because it's going to set up all the other lines. So when I'm happy I'm just going to go along with my pencil and mark a line. You can use a water erase pen, I wouldn't use a heat erase pen for this because your lines are going to disappear. A pencil works fine because we're going to wash our quilt eventually and all this will wash away. So when you're happy with your line we're going to find that four centimetre marker again and line it up with the line we just drew and then we're going to add a new line. Then we're going to line up that 4cm marker again with the line that we just drew and take our pencil along the edge of the ruler and then we're going to do that one more time. So lining up that 4cm line on my ruler and running my pencil along to mark another line. So if I rotate that back, what I've created there is five even sections on my block, four centimetres apart, and that gives us our horizontals. Now I want to make a kind of brickwork pattern on this block so that it's reminiscent of a garden wall, and my vertical lines now need to be offset from each other. So I'm going to start by lining up my two centimetre line this time with the edge of my fabric. I've rotated it back so it's vertical now and I want to mark a line on the first row, the central row and the bottom row. So I'm leaving two rows that don't have markers there. So now I'm going to work in four centimetre sections so I want my four centimetre line lined up with those lines that I just drew and again I'm going to mark a line in the top, middle and bottom sections. Move along again so that my four centimetre line is lined up with the lines I've just drawn and mark the top, middle and bottom sections. Do be careful with that top section because you, if you catch the edge of the fabric like I just did you'll drag the fabric and misalign your ruler so just be careful marking that top section. So again I'm going to line up my four centimetre line with the lines that I just sketched and draw in my top, middle and bottom lines and then I'm going to line up that four centimetre line again and that will leave me a two centimetre section on the right hand side of my block. So that means that these lines are centred across the top. So I've got these two centimetre sections at the edge and then the rest of my bricks marked in. So now we need to mark the other two sections and this is much more simple. I want this line to fall right in the middle of the bricks on the top line. So I'm going to line up my four centimetre line this time 
with the edge of my block and then I'm going to put in a line on my second and fourth row and you can see there hopefully you can pick it up that vertical is now dead center in the first full brick on the top row so I'm going to line up my full centimeter line again with those lines that I just drew in the second and fourth row and then I'm going to mark my four centimetre intervals right the way across to the other side. That process has created for me an offset brickwork pattern with bricks that are four centimetres square and every other line has got the bricks offset so that they form almost like a brick wall and eventually we will running stitch that and that will quilt it on our final block and give us a little bit of texture. So I'm going to keep that safe and now we can move on to our main block. So we have made blocks like this before and if you're not sure how to do this piecing process I will link a video at the top of the screen so that you can get a complete tutorial on how to cut your pieces and how to put them together. But I've basically taken three pieces of fabric that are 20 by 8 centimetres in size. I've used my pink and blue floral that I've used elsewhere on the quilt, my plain yellow and my blue floral. And I've marked a 1 centimetre seam allowance on each of those put them right sides together and then just hand back stitched along those lines to secure them together and then I've pressed the seams to the busier fabric so when you're working with patterns and planes the patterns are going to be less likely to show through your seams so I've pressed one seam to the left one seam to the right and that's given me my finished block and I've also marked my central line so that's 10 centimeters down from the top and that gives us a 20 by 20 centimeter block now I know that 3 times 8 does not equal 20 but basically every time we make a seam we lose 2 centimeters so we start with 24 centimeters of fabric and by the time we've pieced them together we've got a 20 centimeter square. I've also got some of my wide rick rack and we're going to attach this to cover over those seams so I've already cut some of that to size. I've got my heat erase pen that I've used to just mark in my lines and I've got my embroidery scissors. I've got some machine thread that I've got that out just because that's what I use to stitch together the blocks and then I've got my embroidery threads that follow my colour scheme so I've got my anchor brand white which is 001 blue which is 130 my red which is 046 my light green which is 255 my mid green which is 258, my yellow which is 298 and my pink which is 025 and we've used these repeatedly through the quilt. What we're going to do is make another daisy braid block and this will echo the two others of these that we've done elsewhere on the quilt. I'm going to start by adding my rick rack so I want to line this up so that the seam goes right across the centre of the rick rack and doesn't show in any of the dips. So I want to go just above those bottom dips and just below the ones at the top. And I'm going to start on the left hand side and just pin this rick rack in place so that it doesn't move while I'm stitching it down. So you can start in the middle if you want to and work to the left and then to the right or you need to start on the left hand side and smooth it out in one direction so that you don't catch in lumps and bumps into your block you want to keep this really beautifully flat so 
So there's my rickrack secured and I've got one strand of my white embroidery thread here and we're just going to use an applique stitch to hold this down. So to do that I'm going to bring up my thread just inside the rickrack. You can see it's just caught the very edge of the rickrack there and I'm bringing it up through both layers. And then I want to tuck my needle right up against the edge of the rickrack but go back down just through the backing fabric. And then I'm going to move along a little way and come up just inside the rickrack again through both layers. And then tuck my needle right up against the edge of the rickrack and go down just through the backing fabric. And the key to this is to keep your stitches really nice and small and fairly close together so that your rickrack is secured really well. You could make a feature of this stitching and use a contrasting colour thread if you want to. If you do that I would really go for it so I would use two strands rather than one. But I think this one is going to be fairly busy with the pattern fabrics and the stitching that I'm going to do across the centre so I want to keep this nice and subtle. I'm going to just work my way along trying to be really carefully. You can see there I'm holding the rickrack flat with my left thumb so that I'm smoothing out any lumps as I'm going along. As soon as you get to the point where you're at a pin you probably want to take that pin out because when you pin horizontally you will actually just catch a lump it will pucker the fabric up where the pin is holding it so you want to keep your rickrack really flat try not to stitch with pins in so those pins are just there to hold it in place until you get there so you can see me just working my way along there. I've sped this up because it's a very simple stitch and <laughs> it's not that interesting to watch. You can see it stitches down really nice and flat as long as you're smoothing it out as you go. So I'll stitch down both sides of that rick crack and then put another piece on the other seam. So I'm going to do that off camera and then we'll come back. So there we go, there's my rick rack attached and you can see there's no puckering there at all, it's beautiful and flat. And so now we're going to work on our embroidered details. So I've brought back my ruler, I've marked the 10cm point and then I'm marking every 2cm out to the left and then every 2cm out to the right along that central line and that's going to be where the centre of our daisies are going to fall. And then you'll see some sketchy lines appear in a moment. I did a bit of trial and error and I've made a sort of triple braid, almost like a knot of wavy lines going across the centre there and I'm going to back stitch along these now to make a back stitch bring your thread up through the fabric and then you want to work backwards towards the start and then work forwards a stitch length beyond where your working threads coming out so you can see me rocking my needle forward there and then we come back to the end of the previous stitch so we end up with a solid line but we're working back on ourselves before we work forward. So thread through. Don't pull too tight, otherwise you will just pucker up your fabric. So just pull it until the stitch goes flat. So thread through, backwards one stitch length, forwards two stitch lengths so that you're beyond the previous stitch and then back to the previous stitch. Try to keep the thread out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. So once I've stitched along in back stitch I'm going to whip my stitches. So 
So I'm going to whip those back stitches now and to do that I'm just going to come up at the end of my line of stitching and I want to slide my needle from right to left under each stitch. So I'm not going through the fabric here. You can use the eye end of your needle if it helps you avoid catching the fabric or the thread. But I'm going to always work in the same way and just slide my needle underneath each stitch and that creates a slightly raised really solid line and if there's any imperfections in your back stitch this will sort it out. So that's my first line done and I'm going to put in the other two lines that I've sketched there and that gives me a sort of almost Celtic looking knot of lines there. So now I'm going to put a lazy daisy stitch on each of those markers along the central line and to do that we're going to make a detached chain stitch starting on the dot. So we come up at the centre, go back down at the centre and that makes a loop and then we're going to rock our needle forward and come out inside that loop, pull through to catch that loop in place and then we're going to take our needle down over that loop to hold it in place and come back up at the centre of our flower and you can see I'm working my stitches in pairs here just to make sure they're nice and evenly spaced so up at the centre loop the thread around back down at the centre rock up so that we're inside the loop pull through and then hop over the edge of that loop and rock the needle back up at the centre so that I'm ready to make my next petal and I'm doing six petal flowers but you could do eight petals if you wanted to you could make them slightly smaller and do five it's entirely up to you this one you can just play it's we are truly winging it today <laughs> So I'm just putting in my final petal and for your last petal you don't need to come back up at the centre so I'm just going to hop over that loop, take my thread to the back and then secure my thread on the back. So now I've got two strands of my red thread and I'm going to put a French knot in the centre of that flower. So I've brought my thread through and I want to hold it taut and towards me, rest my needle on that thread and I'm going to wrap it three times. Then I'm going to keep that thread nice and taut and take my needle back down through the fabric. You can see I'm holding the working thread with my thumb there until the very last minute and when I pull through that puts a lovely cute little knot at the centre. And While I've got my red thread in my needle I am going to make another flower and I'm basically going to make flowers at each dot varying the colour out of the threads that I've selected and then mixing and matching with French knots in the centre. Just trying to keep my petals looking even. Had to play around with that one a little bit. So that's me just hopping over to put my anchor stitch in to hold that loop in place. And then back up at the centre, back down at the centre to make a loop. And I'm just going to keep working those flowers all along that central line. This is going to create quite a nice contrast because the flower is going to be very even and then we've got those wavy lines around them. So the last thing I'm going to do is put in some leaves and I'm going to blend my thread here. So I've got one strand of my light green, one strand of my mid green in my needle. I hope you can see that and I've knotted the ends together. And we're going to make some leaves in a similar way to the way we've made flowers with detached chain stitches. So I've brought my thread up at the stem 
taking it back down at the stem and I'm rocking my needle forward. This time we're going to make a longer anchor stitch so we're going to just extend it out a little bit beyond the end of that detached chain and I've rocked my needle back so that it comes up back inside that loop and I'm going to go back down at the stem and that puts a straight stitch inside my detached chain stitch just pull that a little bit tight there and that creates a little leaf shape so I'll just show you that again come up at my stem back down at the stem and rock my needle forward so it comes up inside the loop pull through don't pull it too tight keep your stitches round then I'm putting an elongated anchor stitch in coming back up inside the loop and then back down at the stem to put a straight stitch in to create a leaf and I'm just going to put loads of these in in any little spaces all facing in different directions so that they look more natural and I'm just going to kind of crowd out my vines with leaves going in all sorts of directions just to make it look really organic and fill in any of those empty spaces make it just look a little bit fuller so you can see me working along that top line essentially I'm just working the top and then I'll come back along the bottom and make sure I've got plenty of stitches in there as well try and work methodically so that you don't have lots and lots of trailing thread on the back and that's it that's me done I've trimmed back my rick rack at the sides and that's our finished floral vine I think out of the three pieced daisy chain panels that we've done I really like this one I think that straight line of flowers works really well with the curvy vines along the top and bottom so I hope you've enjoyed that if you are going to have a go at this please do share your versions at hashtag fsh23quilt and if you've enjoyed this video please do give us a thumbs up and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of our future uploads if you want a similar project I will put some videos over here and if you are enjoying our content and want to see more just click on our logo down here it makes it really easy for you to subscribe have a great week making your daisy vine block thanks so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye